Part two, applications. On these, figuring out what to do, I think is the hard part. Whereas on the first part, uh, half, whatever you want to call it, the finding the derivative was the hard part. If you're worried about, hey, these derivatives seem crazy. I agree. I'm really not going to ask you to do something, um, especially as crazy as 15 and 16. 14 is fair game, 13. Um, those are the real bad ones. Number eight is just kind of silly. Okay. So hopefully you're ready with those you could dissect. So we need to be able to find the equation for the tangent and normal lines uh, to the graph where x equals pi over 6. Um, I suppose first, maybe we should do, we're going to need a y value. So let's just say when x equals pi over 6, y is equal to sine of pi over 6. And that whole thing is squared. Let's see, sine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Oh, no, it's not. Sine, 1 half. Uh, squared is 1 fourth. Okay. And so in order to get tangent and normal lines, we're going to need a slope. So that's going to be a derivative. The derivative of something squared is 2 times that something. That something is x, uh, sine of x, which has a rate of change of cosine of x. So, by the way, we could change this to sine of 2x. Heck, maybe I'll do both, just so you know. Um, I suppose that's another trigonometry thing you forgot, even though we reviewed that at the beginning of the year. Um, so let's say at pi over 6. y prime is equal to 2 sine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6. And that's going to be 2 times 1 half times the square root of 3 over 2. What? Why so, are you white? You can't wipe with a pen on your computer. Okay. Let me talk to them. Okay, you eat your snacks. And then so over here, at pi over 6, y prime is equal to sine of pi thirds, which is indeed root 3 over 2. So everything works out in both cases. Let's write an or here. And if we want a tangent line and a normal line, probably give some nice notation. Uh-oh, I have to do my tweet. Uh, tangent line to sine squared x at x equals pi over 6. I don't know if you can tell. My Evelyn is sitting right here with me trying to help. So y minus our y value 1 fourth is equal to the slope square root of 3 over 2 times x minus pi over 6. Ooh, minus. And then the normal line. Why do you have to do that? Evie, you got to be quiet, sweetie. Still y minus 1 fourth. Still slope times x minus pi over 6, but all we need to do is change that slope to the opposite reciprocal. I think the ones you guys got wrong on the quiz this week, it was just an algebra problem. Okay. I had to pause that for a second. Much like me, my little girl, Evelyn, has a hard time being quiet. Okay. F is sine squared. G is x squared minus 5. H is a new function, f of g of x, and k is a new function, g of f of x. So, part A, if I'm going to find h prime, I think I want to write h with the functions we have. So, f is on the outside, so that's going to be sine of something all squared. Because, right, that's what it says, sine squared is h. Oh, shoot. I don't want h of x. Oh, yeah, I do. f of g of x. So in here, I'll do x squared minus 5. So k of x is g of f of x. So that's something squared minus 5. And what's inside f of x? So sine squared x. Let's see. 
Now, I don't want to rearrange h prime. I think I'm just going to do the derivative. The derivative of something squared is 2 times that something. That something is sine of something else, which has a rate of change of cosine of that something else. That something else is x squared minus 5, which has a rate of change of 2x. So we can probably rearrange h prime to be 4x. And, well, that is 2 sine cosine, which is sine of 2 times the input. But because those inputs are ugly, I think I'm just going to leave it. Sine of x squared minus 5, cosine of x squared minus 5. And I suppose we're supposed to realize, I don't know, leave enough room for k. I suppose the intent here is to make sure you understand that the composition order matters. f of g and g of f are not going to have the same derivative necessarily. Now in this case, I think I will square. Because that sine to the fourth is just going to allow me to not have to do a chain rule. So k prime of x, the derivative of something to the fourth, is four times that same something cubed. That something is sine of x, which has a rate of change of cosine of x. The derivative of 5 is 0. Okay. I think we're good. So k prime of 4. After writing k prime of x, I... F oh, pi fours. And that's going to be 4 sine of pi fourths. And we're cubing that sine times cosine of pi fourths. I'm relatively certain this is one trig value most of my students know. So sine of pi fourths and cosine of pi fourths are both squared of 2 over 2. And so what's that going to be? Well, let's leave the 4 alone for a second. So 2 root 2 over 8 times root 2 over 2. And so that's 4 times 2 times 2 over 8 times 2. Is that just 1? What a waste of time. Okay. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 divided. Oh, yeah. I think that's 1. So we'll just put k prime of pi fourths as 1. Yeah, I hope that's right. Okay, f of x is the absolute value of sine of x, g of x is x squared on negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Okay, so what does f look like without a calculator? Well, let's think of sine of x. That's negative 2 pi to 2 pi. <coughs> to 2 pi, and so change the color to red. If we're going to graph y equals the absolute value of sine of x, everything that's positive stays positive. So that's 2 pi, we might as well put in pi, negative pi. And there we go. And then, hmm, let's just erase. Oh, looks like we did that from the beginning. Okay, so there we go. Okay, back to blue. I like writing in blue. Okay, so k is f of g of x. Let's see, k of x is f which is the absolute value of sine of something. And that something is x squared. Okay. And tangent and normal line to k at x equals pi force. So the nice part here is that k of x is sine of x squared, let's just say on 0 to pi. 
we can't include those endpoints. K isn't differentiable at zero or pi because of those corners, but we can just drop the absolute value and not really worry about it because pi force is on a nice differentiable part and everything's positive, which matches up with um, sine of x. Um, you might be thinking, well, the x squared is in there. Yeah, but that doesn't really change. Sine of x squared is going to be awfully similar. Okay. Oh, maybe it's not because what are we squaring? We're squaring pi fourths. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, pi fourths is greater than zero and less than one. So when we square each of those, pi four squared is still between zero and one. That's still going to be on a nice happy part of our graph. Okay, so k prime is cosine of x squared times two x. Mm, pi four. K prime of pi four is cosine of pi squared fourths. Yeah, I'm just pausing for a second because I'm realizing things aren't going to work out. My first part says without a calculator. This really feels like it's a calculator problem, but maybe not. Okay. Let's see. That's not zero pi. I got a little bit confused. What are we going to do here? At x equals pi force. Okay. So let's see. I guess we just replace this stuff. And then that's pi halves. This whole thing is our slope. So times x minus pi fourths. And let's see. k of x is sine of x squared. So this is just going to be sine of pi squared fourths as the y value. Yeah. I really feel like that's a calculator problem. Did I miss? I didn't type out. Oh, well, don't really have to worry about that. Okay. So I told people in some of the classes, hey, you should be able to figure this out. And I'm not going to tell you much because I want you to think through it. But I mean, a big hint is, you know, you have three line segments here. And you should know what the derivative tells you about a graph. Not going to give it to you. Is this the last one? Okay, this is pretty quick. I can go play with EV. Okay, so this notation d squared y over dx squared really comes from we're doing d over dx on y, and then when we're done, we're doing d over dx on y again. So we get d squared over dx squared, and then that y goes in there. So that just means second derivative. I don't know if I showed you that. Oh well. So t we should be doing things implicitly. And that first go around is pretty straightforward. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of y cubed is 3y squared dy dx. We can't put in 3, negative 2 yet. So we better solve for dy dx and then take the derivative again. That'll just avoid some... Uh, uh, product rule stuff. So negative 2x over 3y squared, and I guess we do a quotient rule here. d squared y over dx squared is negative denominator 3y squared times the derivative of the numerator, negative 2, minus the numerator, and I'm just going to change that to plus 2x instead of minus negative 2x times the derivative of the denominator, 3 times y squared. Okay, so that's 6y dy dx over the denominator squared. So that's 3y squared squared 
then I think the tricky part is realizing, and we have seen this before, so negative 6y squared plus 12xy, that dy dx should be replaced with what we already found dy dx to be, negative 2x over 3y squared. Ooh, let's... 9y to the 4th in the denominator, d squared y, dx squared is, well, I guess I can divide out a 3. So negative 2y squared plus 4x, hmm, maybe I shouldn't divide out the 3. Let's leave that for a second. So it is going to be 4xy here. One of the y's divides. So 4x times negative 2x over y. Am I confident there? 12 over 3 gives me 4. y over y squared gives me y in the denominator. Yeah, we'll just have to do this twice. 9y to the fourth. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do to get this a little more ready is get rid of this denominator y. Okay, so negative 6y cubed plus ooh, minus 8x squared over 9y to the fifth power. I assume we'll have some questions tomorrow. Uh, we're doing a practice test in my class.